Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Christy and today I have a special video for you. This is my one year on keto update video. So I started my keto journey in March of 2019 on the 10th and I'm recording this video March 10th, 2020. So I wanna be able to give you all of my updates, tips and tricks, things I've learned along the way and what has helped me along my keto journey. So if you're not already subscribed please go ahead and do so because I'd love to have you as a member of my YouTube family make sure you follow me on Instagram it'll be right here I do lots of before and after photos over there and I also do family pics I do have a Facebook group which is called all things keto with Christy and it'll be linked in the description box for you so all you need to do is just click on that link and it'll take you right over there 7,000 members right now and zero keto police. So if you need encouragement, support, looking for recipes, discount codes, things like that, go check out that group and go ahead and join. So let's go ahead and start this video with a little bit of background. In 2006, 14 years ago, I weighed in at over 330 pounds. At that point in January of 2006, I decided to have gastric bypass surgery. For me, gastric bypass was not the answer, but I thought it was the only solution for the weight gain I had at the time and my doctor was pushing it. Before you do anything like that, please make sure you do research, research, and then some more research because it is a life altering decision. You are rerouting your entire digestive system and there are consequences to that. 14 years later, I am still dealing with lots of those. So let's go ahead and flash forward to 2019 and that was January of this past year. I was weighing in at 232 pounds, a size 16 pants and dress and an extra large shirt at that point. I am 5 foot 11 in case you don't know so I'm a pretty tall person so I can carry my weight but I was not happy at 232 pounds. I felt horrible. I had no energy. My skin was a disaster. It was just not a pretty sight. My daughter is a senior in high school and she decided to go ahead and start a low carb lifestyle. So in January, I started that with her and I made it less than one week before I completely quit. It was just too hard and I was making up every excuse not to stick with it that I could find. March of 2019 rolled around and my daughter had lost over 25 pounds and I think I had gained some. And when I realized how well she was doing and how easy she made it look, I realized I needed to do my research, I needed to get all my information, and I needed to go ahead and do this myself. So March of 2019 is when I started my keto journey. Things I didn't do at that point that I wish I had. I did not take any before photos and as a matter of fact I'd even went through all of my phone photos and deleted everything I had because I did not want pictures of myself taken. I was just embarrassed of the way I looked and I wasn't happy with what was showing up on the camera so I have very few, if any, before photos, and that is one major regret. Another thing I didn't do that I wish I had was I did not take my measurements when I began. I didn't take my first measurements until May 8th of 2019, so almost two months later. So if you're thinking about starting a ketogenic lifestyle, go ahead and do those two things in advance. Take you some before photos and do all of your measurements and keep those somewhere safe. You can put them out of the way so you never have to look at them, but eventually you're gonna be glad you have them. So my first month with all the research I had done, I went straight in full force, strict keto and intermittent fasting. I did incorporate that my first month. And the first month on keto, I lost 20 pounds. It's safe to say by that time I was hooked and realized it was definitely something for me. Now with that being said, I was overwhelmed. I had too much going on, I felt like, with trying to count all my macros, try to stay under 20 net carbs, trying to keep my eating window small and do intermittent fasting, and take care of a family with a husband on the road, so I was here by myself all the time. I realized that I wanted to transfer over from strict keto to lazy keto, and that's what I did. So with Lazy Keto, I completely stopped tracking all of my macros. The only 
only thing that I focused on was sticking with clean ingredients and also counting net carbs. In my net carbs, I wanted to stay under 20 a day. Not gonna lie, my weight loss slowed down. Uh, it came to a screeching halt. It basically stopped, but I felt good. I felt healthy. I wasn't sluggish and my skin was clearing up. Um, I had more energy and I knew that I was in ketosis because I used the Keto Mojo and it was showing me that I was burning ketones. I had heard that stalls are normal. You can lose huge amounts of weight in the very beginning of your keto journey and then you can go a month even two without losing much and that's another reason why you want to track your measurements because there was one month i think i lost one pound but i lost 10 inches i would rather have those 10 inches gone than you know five six seven pounds to me the inches made a bigger difference obviously in my clothing than the pounds would by June, I had a whole new problem, and that was hair loss. And I heard, again, that that can be extremely common. I spoke with my doctor about it, which supports a ketogenic lifestyle, and he suggested that I start incorporating collagen into my diet. I didn't start using one regularly until I found one that I fell in love with. And the one that I personally adore, it dissolves great, it's not chalky, it tastes good, is Perfect Keto. And this is what it looks like. It's a pretty large container. It's 11.2 ounces of collagen. They have it in a ton of different flavors. This one is the salted caramel. Comes with your little scoop inside there. And it dissolves perfect. The ones I tried in the past did not dissolve. I would have clumps in my drinks and things like that. If you don't drink coffee, you can use this in other things. I make like a smoothie every morning. Well, it's sort of almond milk, my collagen, my MCT oil powder, my base, and some ice, and it's like a frosty. It is so good. So once I started taking my collagen on a regular basis every single day, the hair loss did slow down. It did take a while before it became completely null and void, and I wasn't losing, I'm serious, handfuls handfuls of hair would come out when I did that. I mean, it was scary and I knew that I was going to go bald. It had happened to me before when I had gastric bypass. I had lost so much hair that you could physically see my scalp and at one point I was wearing wigs and I did not want to get back to that. So before you even get to that point where you're losing hair, find a collagen you love and incorporate it into your diet. I do have a discount code for this one so it'll be linked below if you're interested. On top of it slowing down my hair loss, I started getting tons of new hair growth that you can probably see. I have all these wild hairs constantly growing. My nails and skin have never looked better and my joints even feel better. July rolled around and I started having lots of anxiety. I was going through some things with my dog Quincy who is like my fourth child. If you are a pet lover like I am, then you probably completely understand that. He was sick. He was in the hospital constantly. They didn't know if he was going to make it. My youngest daughter was going through some issues with bullying at school. It just seems like everything happened all at once and I was going through some anxiety that I didn't know how to control. I'm still working on the anxiety issues and I'm getting closer to, I think, figuring out the real root of those, but that is going to be a completely different video because I don't even know if all of you would be interested <laughs> in that. But it has been eye-opening to where I think those have come from, what it's stemmed from, and what I'm gonna do to hopefully fix it. I had set my goal weight in March to be 185, again, 5'11", so I'm pretty tall. I know how I feel at 185 because I've actually been lower than that. When I had gastric bypass surgery, I had actually dropped down to 167 pounds. Not a good weight for someone my height. I think I was in a size four. My skin was gray. My eyes were sunk back in my head and people thought I was sick. Well, it didn't help that I was nearly bald as well. So I was looking really unhealthy at that point and I knew I didn't want to get down to that. So in September, at about six months on keto, I hit my goal of going from 232 pounds to 185. That was a total of 47 pounds lost. And since then, I have lost a few more pounds and I'm right now on the verge of 
considering if I want to change my goal weight. Again, if we go by BMI standards and all the medical charts, I am still considered overweight at 181 pounds. That's where I'm at right now. The beginning of my journey in March and April was pretty much a struggle. I was not perfect on my keto journey. I fell off the wagon about every three or four days. And when I say that, I'm a binge eater. I'm an emotional eater. I am a stress eater. So if something bothers me, then my coping mechanism is food. And I know that's not healthy and I need to work on it and I need to figure it out. So there would be like a week, two weeks that I would be fine. And within those two months, I would like eat something very unhealthy. But the thing with that is I would go straight back on keto my next meal. I did not let those stretch out into days and days and months and months or weeks and weeks long of just binge eating. I had figured out that keto worked for me and it was sustainable and I can tweak recipes and eat good food and still lose weight and be healthy. So by June, July, August, September, October, November, I'd done great. I would go long periods of time, months, without having any issues. And then we would occasionally plan going off of keto for maybe one meal or one dessert, like at one of the kids' birthdays or something like that. We did schedule those. December 26th it seems like was my downfall as far as my struggles with food. We got some news that Chris was going to be going out of town and working for an extended period of time and it just hit me hard. I got used to having him home. He had worked locally. He does travel out of town. He is a traveling welder. So the majority of the year he's not here and I wasn't prepared for it. I don't guess. So I started eating some Reese cups. It was the day after Christmas and they had them on sale. And what did I do? I was at Walmart. I picked some up. I'm still kicking myself over it, but I want you to know it happens. After those Reese cups were gone, within that day, I went right back on keto. About a week later, I had another mishap where I fell off. About two weeks later, I had another mishap where I fell off plan. It has been pretty consistent for about the past two months that I'm having issues sticking with keto 100%. I will have a handful of jelly beans here. I'm saying jelly beans because it's Easter and so that's the candy of choice that's out right now and it's one of my favorites. So I'll have like a handful of jelly beans here. I'm fine for dinner, breakfast, lunch, snack, whatever, but I'm having a hard time mentally coping and sticking with it. And I'm saying this because I want you to know it happens. Nobody can be perfect on their keto journey. The thing is, don't beat yourself up over it. Don't let it become something that happens every single meal, every single day. Just get right back at it and start. And since then, I still have lost some more weight. I am down to, at my one year keto anniversary, I have lost 51 pounds. I am at 181 pounds and I am actually considering changing my goal weight to something a little lower. Right now I'm thinking 174 and it's just a number I have in my head, which is probably crazy because I know that the BMI scale is not, you know, all encompassing. It doesn't tell you everything. Um, it's probably a very outdated scale or form of health at this point, but Right now, I'm still considered overweight by medical standards. And if I got down to 174 pounds, I would be considered, wait for it, you ready? Normal. <laughs> and that is something that I have twisting around in my head that I wanna get down to for some reason. I want to be considered normal. And I know that's horrible. I know it. I know that right now I'm probably the healthiest I have been in years. I eat wonderful foods. I have great lab work. Everything is looking good. My hair, skin, nails, joints, all is good. But in my head, that is still twisting around that I am overweight and I am not normal. Does that make sense to you guys or is it just something that I'm going through? So in just the past month, I did discover finally vitamins and supplements that are keto friendly. And that is something that I had been searching for the entire journey. And let me tell you, it's hard. And when you do find them, they're like 50, 60, $70 and you can't find them in stores. It's something that you have to order online. It's insane 
trying to find something like a supplement that you're looking for or multivitamin that does not have sugar and dextrose and corn syrup and just crazy things in it. So the ones that I have been using are by Equip. And this is the sister company to Perfect Keto. And since I already love them, I went ahead and checked them out. I take the apple cider vinegar peel and I also take the joint support. They have tons of other ones. I think they have a big sale going on right now. And I do have a discount code for them that you can pair with that sale. So if you're looking for some collagens, some workout support, or some supplements, make sure you check them out because they are keto friendly. Okay, that is all I have for my one year on keto update. I've lost 51 pounds so far, lots of inches. I've gave you some tips and tricks. I do have an entire playlist of these videos if you want to go check out my one month, two month, three month, and see how the progress has went and see pictures. I also do videos every Monday, what I eat in a day. So if you want to see the type of meals and snacks that I consume on a daily basis, and you want to get a good idea if keto is for you, those are the videos to check out. I have lots of discount codes. Some are affiliate links and some aren't and everything will be in the description box below. I try to contact every company that I show to see if maybe they're interested in giving you guys a discount code to make things a little easier. Every penny counts. So before you leave, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so every time I upload a video you'll be one of the first to know. Thank you so much for checking out my one year on keto anniversary update video. I will see you in the next one and I hope everyone has a great week. Bye. Sorry, I have a visitor on my lap today.